yeah shall i start sir yes ma'am yeah, start chilpa madam yeah good evening everyone at this outset i would like to thank everyone uh, for our yesterday's uh, episiotomy class which uh, has reached close to 2000 views i thank uh, each one of you for uh, motivating us and uh, for giving us that uh, encouragement uh, to go on with uh, more interesting topics in a more interesting way which is useful for everyone in their uh, day to day practice uh, so without wasting much time I, let me just start today's session today's session will be only tubal ectopic and diagnosis and medical management of tubal ectopic the surgical management we will take it in the next class i would like to finish my entire presentation uh, say in about uh, 12 minutes and then we will take the q and a from dr padma priya uh, so ectopic uh, gestation and uh, medical management has been one of the greatest success stories of the recent uh, uh, gynecology and obstetrics and i think we all should be grateful that we have something called a medical management to manage the ectopic tubal ectopic pregnancy so uh when it comes to ectopic pregnancy i know i mean there are a lot of uh, challenges which uh, a clinician will face both in terms of like diagnosing and uh, in terms of like uh, treatment uh, because ectopic is something where uh, everything can be a variable like the uh, presenting symptoms the clinical uh, manifestation the Uh, diagnosis uh, features and also in terms of the response of the patients to the medical treatment and all uh, and the uh, post operative thing post uh, medical management also things can be very varied and it can be confusing with uh, so many other uh, conditions so let us just uh, stick to what we have to follow so that our uh, pick up rate with ectopic pregnancies improve and also our success rate improve with the medical management so uh, going by the standard uh, uh, the symptoms the three main common symptoms are one is amenorrhea uh, vaginal bleeding and pain abdomen these are three classical symptoms with which a tubal ectopic patient will present with and the uh, ideal uh, treat the ideal diagnosis uh, should be done using beta hcg and transvaginal ultrasonography so here uh, the transvaginal ultrasonography has seen uh, quite tremendous uh, improvement in terms of machinery and also in terms of the skills of all of us where the pickup of uh, ectopic pregnancy is now done even without the rupture of the ectopic uh, uh, gestation so the skills that we need to improve and also what we need to look for uh, now is clear cut which i think everyone if they follow uh will be easier and also we can give better care for the patient so without uh, wasting much time i will go to the screen which will show you an ultrasound uh, picture so, so this, this is, is uh, the ultrasound uh, picture this is the uh, 2d of the sagittal section of the uterus and this i'm sweeping on to the right ovary Uh, sorry that is the left ovary and uh, then i go to the right side of the pelvis where i sweep this is the right ovary where, which has the follicles and uh, then i just zoom in and see that there is something in between see can you see this uh, the uh, the gestational sac kind of a thing or a cystic case in between this is the ovary and the uterus will be somewhere here this is in a 2d so this patient is uh, a case of uh, previous uh, ectopic previous ectopic on the right side and uh, pregnancy test positive previously managed by uh, medical management by me only she is 37 year old natural conception so once i put on the flow you can see that the flow is uh, getting picked up in this uh, uh, in this sac like structure so you can see the ring of uh, fire which is clearly visible here where the blood flow uh, seems to be like you know quite evident so the sac size in this uh, case was about uh, 0.4 to 0.5 cm and uh, you can see a, a very small yolk sac inside also which uh, which is again a clinching point to diagnose a gestational sac in the adnexa so again i will go back to this video as to how do we look for uh, the ectopic gestation one 
you first uh, have to rule out that there is a presence of intrauterine gestational sac when the pregnancy test is positive, the urine pregnancy test if it is positive and if you don't see a gestational sac. So this is the uterus uh, in the sagittal section. So first you image the uterus in the sagittal section and then do a transverse where you take a transverse section and if you cannot see a gestational sac in the uterus, that is when you need to have a high suspicion of a tubal ectopic and you sweep the probe uh, onto the right and also onto the left and uh, you have to give it a little more time to image the area between the ovary and the uterus where usually the uh, sac will be seen. So this is how you diagnose uh, an ectopic gestation. So this can be easily done uh, if we have an index of suspicion, if we, uh, if we have a good machine and if we have the skill to uh, pick, up the, uh, pick up the findings in the scan. So this is another, uh, another scan finding. This uh, is uh, uh, courtesy Dr. Arti Dindayal. Uh, in her hospital so you the, this pregnancy also pregnancy test is positive and uh, this is the sagittal section of the uh, uterus and you don't see a pregnancy in there but definitely there is fluid in the uh, pouch of douglas this is the pod you can see a uh, fluid in the pod and you sweep the probe to look for the gestational uh, sac but uh, you will not be able to uh, see in this case, but uh, the fluid is quite uh, evident in uh, uh, the, this case. So this is the transfer section of the uterus again to check if there is a sac, but there is no sac in there. So this is the ovary, which is seen here. And you can see the uh, the fluid in the POD and this is the fimbria. You can see the fimbria here and you can see something coming out of the fimbria. This is the blood and blood clot. So this is the thickened tube, the free floating fimbria. This is classic of tubal abortion where the products of conception are uh, expelled through the fimbria into the peritoneal cavity with a lot of uh, blood in the peritoneal cavity. So as you can, yeah, so as you can see here, so these are the blood clots. This is the fimbria, this is the thickened tube, and this is the left ovary. So this is again one of the, uh, one of the classical uh, findings in tubal abortion, that is a presence of uh, a lot of fluid on the ultrasound. So when a patient comes with uh, a pain, so here uh, is a clinical scenario, which I think most of us will encounter. So a reproductive age group, uh, woman married or unmarried will come with uh, pain abdomen and uh, vaginal bleeding with or without amenorrhea. Sometimes they say that, yes, I had periods just one week back, 10 days back, there was little spotting. And uh, then you start imaging. So once you start imaging, if at all, if there is tenderness uh, in one of the furnaces and if you are unable to see a proper cystic space in the adnexa, uh, then uh, then uh, you need to think of only two things. One is the if there is fluid in the POD, there are only two things. One is rupture of the ectopic uh, pregnancy and the second thing is uh, corpus luteal hemorrhage. These are the two classical things. Do a urine pregnancy test and if it is positive, you go in with your diagnosis of uh, tubal ectopic unless proved otherwise. If it is negative and if there is a lot of fluid uh, with uh, little clots and uh, if uh, the pregnancy test is negative, then it could be a corpus luteal hemorrhage most probably. So the case in which I showed the unruptured uh, tubal ectopic, so this is, uh, I decided to manage this with uh, uh, medical uh, management, though I gave them the option of uh, uh, option of uh, going ahead with surgical treatment of right salphingectomy because it was a repeat uh, ectopic and previously also I had managed her with uh, uh, medical management uh, but the patient uh, was very clear that she did not want to go ahead with uh, medical uh, with surgical management they wanted to try out the uh, 
uh, medical management again. So I decided to go ahead with medical management and uh, uh, I asked her for a beta HCG. So the beta HCG was about uh, uh, say twelve hundred when she when when uh, she when I did the scan for her with a sac size of about 0.5 centimeters. Uh, so in this situation, when the beta HCG is less than 5,000, when there is no cardiac activity, when the uh, size of the pregnancy is less than 4 centimeters and there is no evidence of rupture of the pregnancy and the patient is hemodynamically stable with, uh, uh, with uh, an intention to come for follow-up regularly, these are the uh, situations wherein I can confidently go ahead with the medical management. So this patient's criteria, except for the fact that it was a repeat uh, ectopic, the other criteria fit in. So I gave her uh, methotrexate. Uh, she was around 55 kilos. So I gave her 50 milligrams of methotrexate uh, intramuscularly and uh, added uh, tablet folic acid uh, for her. So... Uh, with this, uh, I usually follow up. So there are uh, uh, three regimens. One is single dose. The second one is double dose. And third one is multi-dose. So single dose, I uh, choose when the pregnancy size is very small. Uh, very small as in like, uh, like this, when it is less than, uh, say, 2 centimeters. And uh, when the beta HCG is less than 2,000. So if it is a bigger gestational sac, uh, then I uh, sometimes I decide to go ahead with the double dose regime. Uh, so here in this patient, I gave a single dose uh, regime and uh, uh, we administered, uh, say, uh, on uh, on that day whenever she did the scan and I followed her up. So I will uh, share the follow up of the, uh, the beta HCG. Uh, what uh, what happened so the beta hcg started uh, increasing in the uh, in the first uh, four days and uh, so i gave her uh, uh, i gave her another injection on uh, uh, day uh, day 4 so the day 1 is the day that we give the first dose from there on i count day 4 and i gave her another dose of uh, methotrexate and after two doses the method, the beta HCG value started uh, coming down. Uh, so this is uh, one way of doing it. And I usually don't do any scan for a week after giving the methotrexate because we see that uh, if we do a TVS uh, during that week when we have given one or two doses of methotrexate, we usually see a slight increase in the size of the gestational sac, which could be because of the separation of the sac or because of the bleeding. And uh, as long as there is no fluid in the pouch of Douglas, as long as there is no uh, no increase in the severity of the pain, I usually don't uh, do anything much. Uh, and I repeat the scan only after uh, one week. And this patient had complete uh, uh, resolving of the uh, of the ectopic, where the beta HCG became less than uh, uh, less than uh, five. Uh, within, uh, I think, uh, yeah, it took 20 days, but it became less than five. Uh, so, yeah, uh, before I gave methotrexate, uh, the investigations which I usually do is uh, CBC, LFT, creatinine, uh, blood group, and uh, yeah, I think uh, 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 RBS and TSH. And uh, uh, I make sure that... Uh, they are uh, not traveling out of uh, the uh, out of station and i also tell them that in case if there is uh, any symptom like severe pain and severe bleeding then they need to report to the hospital and i do this as an outpatient management i don't uh, admit them for medical line unless they opt for it uh, they usually opt for it when they are not very confident uh, about this whole thing. And uh, when the pregnancy sac size is anywhere between uh, 3.5 to 4 centimeters and they keep complaining that there is weird uh, uh, pain in the lower abdomen. So these patients where I think that there may be an increased uh, chance of rupture while they are on medical management, these are the ones I give them the option to get admitted for observation in the hospital. But 90% uh, uh, of them uh, will be, we will be able to manage in uh, outpatient setup. So 
yeah, I I prefer to do a beta HCG follow up rather than the ultrasound follow up. And after that, uh, once they get their periods again, so I do a vaginal scan to check as to what is happening. And uh, in case if they opt to do a uh, HSG before they start trying to check the patency of the tube, then I ask them to do it after, uh, uh, say, after three months. So here is uh, a HSG, which uh, I have done for a patient after uh, six months because uh, they did not uh, conceive. So this is the uh, this is the right ectopic pregnancy which was managed. Uh, of course, not this patient, some other patient, and uh, you can see that there is right coronal block. Uh, so the usually, if at all, if there is a block, it will not be a coronal block. But at the same time, we cannot ignore this. So when we have done the medical management, uh, especially with uh, multiple doses of methotrexate, and uh, uh, when we have uh, uh, seen that the pregnancy size is like, you know, not uh, really resolving in spite of uh, the beta HCG being low. So those are the times when we see a blockage in the uh, fallopian tube after, uh, after the medical management. So I think that is the end of my presentation. So we'll take questions uh, from Dr. Padmapriya. So yeah, uh, Dr. Padmapriya, yeah, you can go ahead. Yeah. Uh what is the main uh, thing to diagnose ectopic pregnancy, madam? Uh, ultrasound or uh, do you even see like some people prefer MRI, 3D ultrasound, 2D ultrasound or, uh, uh, you know, if you don't see it, if it's very small, you're suspicious MRI. No, 2D ultrasound is more than enough. And uh, as much as the ultrasound mission is important, the operator behind the machine is equally important and we should have high index of suspicion when uh, we we are diagnosing ectopic. So we see this trend in Bangalore, you know, where uh, the infertility centers pick up ectopic like this. So even before it is ruptured, so whoever is doing uh, infertility practice or in any of the infertility centers when a patient goes, so uh, the pickup rate of uh, uh, the ectopic is much better than in a diagnostic centers. Of course, I mean, if they if the diagnostic centers have uh, senior radiologists and senior uh, uh, people doing the scans, uh, they also pick up. But I, I see that like, you know, uh, gynecologists who are uh, trained in fetal medicine and who are doing gynec uh, scans uh, day to day and who are working uh, associated with an infertility center, their pickup rate of uh, uh, tubal ectopic is extremely good. They pick up like, you know, 0.3 centimeters, 0.2 centimeters, beta HCG, like, you know, just around like 1,300, 1,200. I mean, they just pick up like that. So I encourage all gynecologists to start doing the scans by themselves. And if they don't see a intrauterine gestational sac when the pregnancy test is positive, please have a high index of suspicion. So once you uh, don't see the pregnancy in the ultrasound, in the transvaginal ultrasound, where the value should be at least 1,500 for you to see a sac in the transvaginal scan. And if it is a transabdominal scan, then the value of beta HCG should be around 6,000. So if you don't see it, then order for for a beta HCG immediately. And if the beta HCG value is more than 1,500, then it is your duty to make an effort to look for it uh, or call the patient back the next day or just uh, like, you know, I mean, just have a close monitoring of that patient. So I have seen people like, you know, calling them after uh, say uh, one week, 10 days in spite of like, you know, uh, UPT sh showing positive beta HCG is 2000, but in the scan, it says that there is no pregnancy visible. So don't do that mistake. Have a high index of suspicion. If you are not able to pick it up, please uh, send it to a person who can do a good uh, or a better vaginal scan. But no MRI, no 3D, and uh, no X-ray, nothing else is required. Doing a good 2D is sufficient to diagnose an ectopic pregnancy. What about biochemical investigation that should be carried out other than serum beta HCG? Some people do progesterone levels. Do you even 
yeah see uh, progesterone levels i don't think i don't do ma'am it is another say 700 800 rupees extra i don't do it but if the progesterone levels are more than 20 then it says it is a viable pregnancy if it is less than 5 then it says it is a non viable pregnancy but then again majority of the times it will be between 5 and 20 so better not to get confused with progesterone and again like you know as it is like in ectopic there is so much of confusion little fluid more fluid there is something like cystic space in the uterus also something like in the adnex also patient is having pain patient is having bleeding so already there is so much of confusion better not to add on to that better stick to only transvaginal ultrasonography and beta hcg forget about anything else okay madam and you've already told about the correlation. If it's less than 1,500, 1,500 to 5,000, 5,000 and above, then the sac size. And if cardiac activity is present, uh, you know, and then how do you correlate everything you've explained in detail? Now, um, the other thing is, Yvonne, what about this? Other than the ring of fire sign, do you think anything else that they have to see in ultrasound? Um, I would suggest like, you know, uh, to check for uh, one, see, there are little, little finer points. See, you check for the corpus luteum. If you see a corpus luteum on the right side, look for the ectopic on the right side. If there is fluid in the POD, which is, which you cannot explain, which you have not documented in that patient before, then you have to, again, like, you know, um, uh, uh, like sit up and uh, take notice of it and uh, make an effort to search for the pregnancy. So sometimes in obese patients especially, it is very difficult uh, to locate these uh, ectopics, especially if they have had previous uh, laparoscopies, if they have had uh, previous tubal surgeries and all. But uh, it is our duty to do it. I think uh, we should just take a few more minutes to uh, do the scan and uh, pick it up. Okay, ma'am. What is this uh, in, in case of, uh, do you look for pseudo sac and then do you see that, have you ever diagnosed, they, you know, in theoretically they say that double decidual sign, you know, the double ring sign, have you ever seen something like that? You know, it's just theoretical. Okay. okay. I am like, because you do such high quality ultrasound. So, so yeah. my operate with ectopic is like excellent even my radiologist can miss but uh, I like, you know, I mean, I am quite good in uh, diagnosing ectopic. Okay, ma'am. What is the expectant management of ectopic tubal pregnancy and when do you advocate it? When do you? See, ma'am, uh, when we start doing beta HCG, say, for example, if you, uh, if for my patient, if you had done a beta HCG, uh, so, and it comes as like 300 and the sac size is about, say, like 0 0.5, 0 0.3. So, what do you do? I mean, you, uh, you think that, okay, it is very small, beta HCG is hardly anything. So, can you just wait and watch? So, in that case, if you are really tempted, of course, in this patient, I was not tempted because she already had a previous history of uh, uh, medically managed ectopic pregnancy on the same side so uh, if at all if it is a, a first time ectopic then if the beta hcg value is less than 1000 then you can repeat the beta hcg after uh, two days and see if the beta hcg is falling then you can like you know continue with your expectant management but i wouldn't really do it because the more the beta hcg value then the success with uh, methotrexate will be lesser and lesser so whatever beta HCG value, if you see a gestational sac on ultrasound, just go ahead with the medical management. I don't believe in uh, expectant management in my practice at least. Yeah, that was my next question, madam. Do you ever do expectant management or you just straight away start off with uh, medical straight management? Away. Straight away medical management, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. In case of this heterotopic pregnancy, this serum beta HCG values, how do you correlate it? Because, you know, correlate. It doesn't correlate at all because uh, having uh, an intrauterine pregnancy just like, you know, it messes up the whole uh, equation of like, you know, not uh, doubling, not tripling and all those things what we classically see in ectopic, all that is gone. So you can't really rely on beta HCG values when it comes to heterotropic pregnancy and you have to only depend on the ultrasound features and if at all, if it is a patient with uh, infertility treatment uh, uh, pregnancy, then you have to see whether there were two follicles, whether both ruptured, whether you have done an IUI. So all these retrospectively, you have to correlate. And if at all, if there is high index of suspicion, uh, uh, like features like 
like uh, fluid in the pod and patient has tenderness patient has pain and uh, constant like you know uh, that uh, syncopal attacks then you definitely have to uh, uh, put in a scope and uh, just rule it out in case if uh, no other uh, no other features are fitting in so you can just put in a scope and uh, see and rule out heterotropic pregnancy in such cases thank you ma'am how do you follow up this medically managed uh, tubal ectopic uh, pregnancy patients so if it is only one time uh, tubal ectopic then uh, i uh, uh, i just uh, ask them to like you know i i assume that the tube will be okay and i ask them to try for pregnancy after 2 months and i continue the folic acid uh, even uh, continuously i don't stop the folic acid in between and in case if they don't conceive in the next 3 to 6 months depending on their age i uh, give them the option of doing a ssg or a hsg hsg is what i prefer because there will be a documented uh, report which will say whether the tube is open or blocked and uh, in case if there is a blockage uh, of that side then i will i will tell them and they can try they can come for follicular scans to check if they are ovulating on the opposite side and on those months they can try for pregnancy naturally okay ma'am what is the maximum number of uh, methotrexate injections you have given and uh, over how much period of time and what is the recommendation so in single dose it is just on day 1 you give and you follow up the beta hcg after 7 days okay in between you don't do anything at all you just keep observing because many a times between day 1 and day 4 you see that the beta hcg might rise uh, and uh, if at all if you are very paranoid and if the patient is also paranoid you repeat a beta hcg on day 4 and see if the value is uh, come down by 15% then you just don't do anything you just observe for uh, till day 7 in uh, double dose you give the uh, methotrexate on day 1 and day 4 if it is multi dose then uh, you give it on day 1 4 7 and 11 so once in 3 days you just keep uh, giving the methotrexate for four doses i in my practice i follow max i give three doses that is day 1 day 4 and day 7 and uh, i uh, do the beta hcg on day 4 and uh, do uh, do it again on day 7 i do a scan on day 7 uh, which is very clear i mean i don't change my protocol so in case if the beta hcg levels are increasing after day 7 that is when i tell them that we have to uh, do the surgical management i don't wait or i don't uh, push it beyond three doses but in multiple dose uh, in spear of it's mentioned like you can try four doses also but uh, i usually i don't do it i do Pro- i role of sorry madam finish it i do only three i mean my practice i don't give the fourth dose okay polonic acid madam when do you give so if i'm doing a multiple dose uh, regime like if i give more than uh, one dose then i uh, uh, do the uh, uh, do the uh, give the polonic acid where uh, i give it 0.1 uh, mg on day 2 day 4 day 6 and day 8 injection and methotrexate in multi dose if the patient is above 60 kg then i give it as uh, 1 mg uh, per kg body weight so usually folitrax uh, is available in 25 mg 50 mg so if at all uh, if uh, the patient's weight is more than 60 then i'll give 75 75 mg okay ma'am and the dose for methotrexate uh, injection you know you've already mentioned about it somebody was uh, like if you repeat more than 3 methotrexate injections or say max 3 meth what are the other parameters investigations you do to actually diagnose toxicity i do only lft ma'am i don't do anything else okay okay ma'am and role of this uh, kcl hyperosmolar glucose direct injection of methotrexate into the ultrasound guided nothing 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 just okay. two things like one is like first diagnosis diagnosis in that only two things one is do a previous one is uh, beta hcg in treatment there are only two things one is methotrexate second thing is like uh, laparoscopy apart from this please don't confuse yourself with anything else like mifepristone uh, and uh, mesoprostol kcl and injecting methotrexate into the sac all these are like you know not practical enough not worth your time use that time for something more productive work uh, it's not going to work what about rh negative uh, patients following your medical management do you administer uh, immunoglobulin 
yeah uh, i give 50 50 mg um, uh, 50 yeah i give it ma'am i give it if it is less than yeah even anything i mean rh negative i give it though it is uh, theoretically to be given only after 8 weeks of pregnancy but uh, i give it in uh, ectopic also letrozole treatment madam protocol treatment and how do you follow up these patients so letrozole is uh, just uh, giving letrozole alone will not work so if we are giving letrozole we have to give it with uh, methotrexate so when we are giving methotrexate already then i don't see a point in adding uh, letrozole i have used it in only one case where the beta hcg was not coming down uh, after two doses of methotrexate then i gave five days of letrozole and then it came down but i don't know whether it would have come down even without the letrozole with just two doses of methotrexate if you know what i mean so yeah. i don't uh, i don't uh, routinely do that okay and uh, what are the long term fertility prospects following uh, ectopic pregnancy yeah so there will be uh, uh, tubal damage definitely can be can be there there could be a repeat ectopic which is increased by almost uh, the risk is increased by 10 times uh apart from that uh, i don't uh, think there is anything else okay and following the medical management uh of this tubal ectopic pregnancy when can the patient get pregnant when do you after, advise after two periods ma'am after two periods okay ma'am and uh, you've already told about the rule any pro- yeah prophylactic methotrexate in cases of uh, lap salting gotomy not ectomy gotomy do you advocate uh, prophylactic methotrexate any when you're doing a surgery do you still go ahead to prevent uh, prophylactic act- activity no 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 ma'am so since oh. i have uh, a decent uh, infertility uh, patients who come with pregnancy to me only they follow up with me so most of them are uh, uh, coming for fertility so i don't want to compromise on their fertility by giving methotrexate unnecessarily if you uh, if you know what i mean i mean only when it is indicated i give otherwise i usually refrain from uh, using any kind of uh, drugs so if this patient okay you manage the medical uh, uh, medically perfectly and this uh, beta hcg values drop perfectly and everything is fine so the patient tells madam during my next pregnancy when to meet you and how to follow what is the key points you tell her so same thing ma'am uh, once missed periods i mean they do the upt and report to me within 2 uh, to 3 days and if the upt is positive i will call them uh, for a scan and if in the scan i'm not able to see the sac i will ask for the beta hcg again if the beta hcg is more than 1500 and if i'm still not able to see the pregnancy i have a high index of suspicion of ectopic i call her again after one day to recheck my scan though i will not charge her the next day if it is not seen then i will call her again the subsequent day so it goes on like that i mean there is no change at all in our protocol yeah i pretty much finished everything ma'am the questions from the chat box uh, madam will uh, uh, you know write a detailed message and put it up in all the groups yes is yes. that fine madam yeah yeah thank you ma'am thank you wonderful thank you. wonderful uh, presentation ma'am yeah very informative thank you very much bye ma'am